What's going on guys, it's your boy Adoptionism here, uh, bringing you guys a video on the newest Destiny update that has just happened. Uh, you guys will see this procking up right here. Uh, it came effective yesterday and I wanted to get a better understanding and plus I was on a grind about doing a whole bunch of other uh, videos yesterday. But this one is the huge one that everyone has been waiting for, nail biting and all. It's uh, the exotic update which is just fantastic that it's finally here. Uh, so yeah, let me just jump right into this, uh, uh, 1.1, the one about the exotics and the raid. Uh, so today's patch includes the long-awaited arrival of exotic weapon buffs, uh, additional acquisition paths for destination, upgrade materials, along with additional changes to exotic gear node upgrading, in preparation for the soon-to-be-released expansion, The Dark Below. We're also trying to correct issues, uh, included by our more recent update to the raid. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, exotic weapons are designed to look, feel, and sound overpowered. At the same time, they're not supposed to break the balance of the game. We hope these weapons, uh, these weapons challenge the way players think about their loadouts. Exotics will be a constant work in progress. All right, this is general uh, in preparation for the dark below. Exotic weapons, uh, exotic armor and up weapons no longer require ascendant materials to upgrade. But here, here's why. The final upgrade node of all exotic gear will require an exotic shard. And it says the only way you can get exotic shards is either by dismantling exotics, which not really anybody wants to do, or by purchasing one from Xur for seven strange coins. So that's going to really make it interesting on how you pick and choose, either if you want to get stuff to upgrade your exotics or use your strange coins to actually buy exotics. So that's really interesting. Uh, exotics now start at a higher base attack value and have narrowed upgrade range to compensate. So that's really cool. So the thorn has been upgraded now to where projectiles now briefly, briefly highlight targets on impact. So that's pretty cool. Uh, mark of the devourer or the dot, the DOT, damage over time. Upgrade increased against PVE enemy targets. Uh, reload speed is increased, magazine size increased, ammo inventory size increased. Okay. Uh, stability and weapon handling is increased. Now, with the bad juju, this is a really good one. Uh, the, magazines, the magazine size increased to 8 bursts. It was only enough for 5 bursts, but now it's enough for 8, so that's actually really good. Uh, ammo inventory size, which is like your reserve ammo, that's been increased. The string of curses now also decreases the cooldown of your super on kill, so that's that's huge for PVE. Like that is massive. Uh, adjusted effects to not block first person reticle, which I'm not too sure. I mean, maybe there's just something that most of us don't notice. Uh, I don't know. I think actually when you shoot with the when you would shoot the burst fire, the muzzle flash actually made it to where you couldn't even really see down the reticle. So that was big. And then hard light uh, stability increased, and then the perfect balance upgrade replaced by fitted stock to increase maximum possible uh, weapon stability. So that's really great. The Suros Regime uh, lowered total damage at the end of the mag on the Suros Regime upgrade to be more in line with the glass half full perk on legendary auto rifles. So again... Uh, you guys know that early on the Soros Regime was actually a really, really, really insanely powerful gun, and now they're just toning it down. Uh, for you PlayStation players, the Monte Carlo has its uh, stability increased, its range slightly decreased. Uh, the Monte Carlo method upgrade now also has a chance to fully charge melee ability on kill, so that's really cool. And here's a big one. This is where I might actually want to try and get the Mita Multi-Tool. But, uh, yeah, so the only thing about the Mita Multi-Tool is that Mita Rounds now have increased knockback against targets in both PvE and PvP. So that's going to be just insane right there. And then, again, for PlayStation people, the Hawk Moon, uh, the Send It Upgrade, which uh, was redundant, yeah, re uh, has been replaced by the reloads, or the speed reload. So that's really great. And then Red Death, uh, the rate of fire increased slightly, but burst damage was reduced to compensate for that. And Plan C, the weapon handling speed increased, uh, and the player speed increased while Plan C is in hand. 
So I'm guessing uh, being able to run fast with it. And what the fuck? Yo, there's a cinematic. Cool, let's watch this while I read these two. The Vex Mythoclass. This is really great. Its attack power has been increased from uh, 300, but now it's at 230 or 323. So that's that's really great. The base damage increased, fixing bug we introduced in previous patch, enhanced battery upgrade by extended mag. This change still allows for a significant upgrade to the magazine size, but less than before. Because I think last time it usually starts off at like 30. Or like 28 or like 32 rounds or something like that, but you get the uh, extended mag or the enhanced battery or whatever, made it to where it had like 58 or some shit, like some ridiculous amount, so they kind of took that down a couple rounds, so that's good. The invective, the reload speed has increased significantly, uh, auto rifles slightly, s or auto fire slightly slower. The icebreaker. The send it upgrade replaced by lightweight, which was redundant as Icebreaker already had maximum range. So that's good because there's like three different things on the Icebreaker that you could already improve its range on. So it was like completely pointless. And it has uh, no effects for enemies killed by Icebreaker upgrade. Then the patience and time. The snapshot upgrade replaced by custom optics provides a lower zoom option. The super good advice has uh, increased stability. And the truth uh, homing rocket launcher. Uh, its magazine size has been increased to three when it was only one, for those of you who didn't know. So, I mean, that's that's a huge step as well. So, I mean, that's actually really crazy. Oh, look, and I noticed that the daily, they're actually letting it to where you also get or, uh, that stuff. That's cool. Well, you know what? Actually, let's check this out. Look at that. Only helium filaments to upgrade. And then one exotic shard at the very bottom. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, that is going to be so dumb and so easy. Look at that. Only 32 helium filaments. Oh my god. What about this one? Let's see what this one was. Yeah, look at that spirit. Dude, this is going to be crazy easy. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I want to go to the tower and check out that other stuff. Uh, the raid, oh, excuse me, uh, the raid fixed an issue we introduced in a previous patch in which Atheon did not correctly send three players, uh, through the time gates. Yeah, pretty much meaning that he didn't, uh, it's, it, it's actually supposed to be random rather than the three people that are furthest away from him, which I guess that was an exploit, but, um, yeah, then they fixed an exploit where the Templar could be forced off its platform so that's going to be difficult considering you have to kill the templar i think i don't remember if it was a time-based thing or whatever but to get that uh extra random chest or not random chest but like the secret chest after you beat the templar uh i'm not too sure how that's going to affect that the daily heroic story oh yeah dest <laughs> destination materials now drop from completing a daily heroic so that'll actually be really good. Actually, a lot of these, them, I think a lot of these fixes are going to get me back into it. Um, let's see. Bad Juju. Let's check this out. Magazine size is 24. Yeah, see, before it was only 15, so that's really great. And send it, obviously, does that, but you, it's stability. It want stability. I don't know. I feel like they increased the stability. I might actually switch it to send it now. Ah, uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, bounties removed the Relic Hunter bounty, which some of you guys may or may not know that that was the, uh, the PvP bounty for doing, what was it, oh, fuck, uh, uh, brain fart. Um, wow. Playing Salvage, uh, on PvP. So that's cool. Uh, and then Destinations, Destination Materials now drop from completing the daily patrol bounty so that's even that's really good too uh so vendors reduce cr okay see now this one is where you're not going to be able to farm this guy so i guess in a sense he's kind of going to troll us because now we're not going to get packages from him as often we have some angry. but yeah they're saying uh they reduce the crypt on Cryptarch reputation gain from engrams, but reputation reward packages now have an increased chance for legendary engrams so that's really good 
Uh, players will now be able to use the Vanguard marks and Crucible marks to purchase Spin Metal, Relic Iron, Spirit Bloom, and Helium Filaments. So I guess I'll try and run down here real quick to show you guys. Oh my god, if I can do this one-handed. Uh, also, Xur now sells new exotic material, the exotic shards, to upgrade the final node of exotics for seven strange coins. So, again, I mean, it's repeating what the other thing was. Uh, let's check right here. Yep, so now you can actually trade 10 marks to get 20 of the material. That's probably what I'm going to end up wasting a lot of these on if I end up racking up. Because a lot of you guys know I don't care for PvP, but I love PvE. Uh, and then the faction class items, for example, the Future War Cult Cloak, Dead Orbit Mark, etc. are now replaced by faction emblems and the rank up reward packages from faction vendors. So that's really cool, so you don't have to waste anything to buy them. Just as soon as you rack up uh, enough of the uh, reputation gain, it gives it to you. So that's really fantastic. And then, I wish I had the Mythic class to show you guys the 323, but you know... This game hates me and doesn't like to do that. Uh, and then technical, they're just working on fixes which should reduce the instant of B family uh, of KTOs, which is like disconnecting errors and stuff like that. And then fixed an issue in which Xbox One party chat inc er, induced a slower frame rate, uh, which is why a lot of people, even with me, when I would do the, uh, the raid and stuff, I would always have to leave the party because of how bad it was. Oh, but look, what do you know? This is why I also stopped fucking playing Destiny. But yeah, um, I really hope you guys at least enjoyed the updated info for those of you who don't follow the, follow the forums. And yeah, um, fuck their connection ass error codes. But yeah, guys, I really hope this helps you guys out. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Adoptionism. Link is down in the description below. And as always, don't forget to check out my buddy Jay Stream. All of his links are down in the description as well. And with the holidays coming up or even after you... Uh, you watch this after the holidays don't forget to stop by 7controllers.com use discount code adopt that's adopt upon your checkout so that way i can help you guys by getting you five percent off and you guys can show me some support by using my discount code so yeah guys this has been your boy adopt i love you peace out